Hello everyone, this is Francis Chan. I'm glad to have David again to share with us on another topic, options for companies in financial stress. Thank you, Francis. So today we're going to look at what directors uh, and business owners can do if they find themselves in a situation where their company is in financial distress. So we'll look at the uh, director's obligations, creditors' actions, restructurings and workouts, as well as the types of winding up. Welcome to this YouTube channel of K-Leaders. I'm Francis Chan. I'm David Wong. Derek, I need your help because my client, his company is insolvent and the directors are very concerned about his risk exposures. Thank you, Francis. So I think we got to start at the beginning and directors, they owe various statutory and fiduciary duties mm. to their company. Mm. Normally, this is owed to their shareholders. But when a company enters financial distress or mm. is in the zone of insolvency, that means there's a risk of it being unable to pay its debts, mm. those duties also extend to uh, creditors as oh. a whole. Okay. So that means directors need to take control mm. and need to take action quickly to deal with any financial problems that the company is facing. Mm. Otherwise, if they fail to do that, there's a risk of personal liability in terms of some of the uh, transactions, mm. as well as the possibility of disqualification orders. And we'll go into that in a bit later. Okay. Certain transactions may also be unwound or subject to challenge if the company does go into a liquidation process. I see. So you talk about directors. What about the position of creditors? So the key thing to keep in mind here is that even if the directors don't do anything, uh, creditors might take the first step. Mm. For instance, they may sue the company for unpaid debts. Okay. Uh, they might serve a statutory demand on the company for payment of debts that mm. are outstanding. Mm. Um, they may also present a winding up petition which puts the company into liquidation, even if the directors don't want to put the company into liquidation. Okay. There's also, should mention that secured lenders, that is, uh, creditors who have some form of security, such mm. as a mortgage or a charge, a pledge or a lien uh, over assets of the company, they may also take action in terms of enforcing that security or that collateral mm. by, for instance, appointing a receiver, a receiver being a third party who mm. acts on behalf of the creditor, the secured creditor, to take control of those assets and then to sell them to pay off that debt. So Derek, other than liquidation, is there any other options that my client can consider? Certainly. I think the best thing to do, um, as always, is to try and take the lead. And that means uh, thinking about restructuring and workout options. Mm. These are generally voluntary kind of uh, informal arrangements, mm. which are arrived at by direct negotiations with your creditors. So okay. calling major creditors and trying to come to some kind of voluntary arrangement to either change the debt or to compromise the claims or debt so that they can be met by the company. Uh, as these are voluntary arrangements, they mm. need to be recorded contractually. Mm. Um, and sometimes in some situations, uh, a scheme of arrangement might also be used to uh, put through a restructuring or workout. Mm. Scheme of arrangement is a... Uh, procedure under the company's law which allows claims to be compromised even if a minority of creditors do not agree and that is a court process. I see. I think from uh, my point of view, I think it's better to negotiate with the creditors so that the creditor can get something rather than nothing in liquidation. That's right, that's mm. right. And indeed another thing to keep in mind is that later this year Hong Kong will hopefully enact its provisional supervision and corporate rescue bill, which will give another option to directors to use to restructure their companies. I see. So um, you provide options, but if the creditors really don't want to agree anything and insist on his own position, then what's next? So I think in those kind of situations, the directors need to think about winding up the company. Oh. So there are kind of... Uh, Two main types of winding up in mm. Hong Kong. One mm. is what is called voluntary winding up mm. and one is called involuntary. Okay. A voluntary winding up mm. is where the company itself initiates the winding up procedure voluntarily. Mm. Um, and the 
first situation is a member's voluntary liquidation, mm. which is where the shareholders resolve to put the company into liquidation. Mm. A member's voluntary liquidation can only be done if the company is solvent. Yes. So if the company is insolvent, then it goes into a creditor's voluntary liquidation. Okay. And again, it's commenced by the shareholders resolving to wind up the company, but then the creditors take control of the process after that. And that's a creditor's voluntary liquidation. Yes. For uh, Hong Kong, there's also a special section 288A provision, which allows the directors of a company uh, a fast track way to put a company into a creditor's voluntary liquidation. Okay. Now, if someone else presents the petition or if the company wants to present its own petition in court, mm. um, that's what we call an involuntary winding up or a compulsory liquidation. That's where the court is involved through the presentation of a winding up petition mm. and then the court will take uh, steps to appoint a liquidator and the liquidator will also then wind up the company. Okay. I think amongst these various forms, I think the, the cheapest, but the quickest is the members' voluntary liquidation, right? Uh, yes. That's right. The yeah. quickest uh, will be a member's voluntary, but again, the company has to be solvent. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so what's the takeaway for this episode? So I think the takeaway for this episode is that directors really need to act um, quickly in order to ensure that their company has more options on the table. Yeah. Because if they don't, creditors might act first. And in Hong Kong, there are a wide range of options for directors to consider in terms of dealing with their financial situation. I see. So act quickly is the key. It is always the key. Yeah. Thank you, David. And thank, thank you. you for watching. What's our topic for next episode? So for the next episode, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into directors' duties. Oh, interesting. So see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please give us a like and subscribe and share with your friends. Look forward to your continued support. See you next time. Bye-bye.